Well, let's take a look at the markets. Uh, they're following up on the news of uh, Kenya breweries. Uh, we, the shilling and the, the stocks uh, on the Kenya market. The uh, NSE 20 fell for the first time in 12 sessions, and uh, the market view is that there was disappointment in the Barclays results, and then that led to investors selling off uh, banks and telecom shares. And then the shilling, weaker versus the dollar for the first time in seven sessions, down 1%, uh, 1.3% on the year to date so far. So so let's uh, now cross to the Kenya market update, which is uh, done by Anthony Kimani, who is research analyst at Genghis Capital. Good morning, Anthony. Uh, let's have a look at that pullback. Uh, the disappointment in Barclays results seems to be the main uh, point about the market performance yesterday. Investors selling off banks, profit taking perhaps, and telecom shares. Yes, that's true. We saw a lot. Of, we have been seeing a lot of selling off in some of these banking stocks and as you've mentioned Barclays was a disappointed as a disappointment in that regard we saw earnings growing uh, eight percent and that was below our expectations given that it's similar to what this it's, the, it's what the inflation rate has been and to us that was not necessarily growth and if you look at the counter it's been a dividend stock for as far back as we can remember and the cut in dividend uh, we believe that did not agar well with some of the investors who invest in that stock was the cut in the dividend not expected and to what extent were there updates or market indicators that the results would be uh, as they turned out uh, basically the, what we saw in the first half of last year was high interest rates and of course, we expected that this would affect banks, but what we didn't expect to see was Barclays taking on a more growth-oriented strategy. As you've known, it's been more of a mature company, and now the claims that they are cutting dividends to focus more on their, on, their tele, on their technology, that one we believe did not go well with investors. For the banks generally, Anthony, the, uh, the interest rate environment obviously is important to them. On the one hand, the high interest rates discourage uh, borrowing by, by many companies and individuals. On the other hand, high interest rates uh, mean that investment income is higher. So how are the banks reacting there in terms of the Kenyan economy at the moment uh, and the interest rate environment and that balance between investment income, uh, letting money sit there and gain interest, and the lending income? Uh, if you if you look at the the P and L of most banks, you will know, you will realize that a very small chunk of that is actually investment income. Majority of their of their of their profits come from loaning out money, and what we saw so, because they sort of took profits last year when they recognized those assets under their held and their, their ATS books and. What we are seeing happening now is that those profits are not being reflected this year. They, they were taken last year, and now they are only left with the loan books, and the earnings in the loan books are what, the, the earnings in the loan book is what was going to grow the, their balance sheets. Let's look at the telecom sector. That's the other one that uh, was said to be uh, sold off yesterday by people looking perhaps to take a bit of profit. Uh, any other factors at work there? Because we do often talk about those shares. Uh, if you look at, for instance, if, uh, Access Kenya, which is a huge, which is this, a huge player in the telecoms in Kenya, you will realize that it was one of the stocks that was sold off yesterday. And the, the, the idea behind that selling off People actually thought that their earnings would come a little higher. They're expecting a dividend payout this year. But what we saw happening was the consolidation of KDN and Swift, Swift Global, which, is, which would make a huge telecoms company here in Kenya and intensify the competition in that regard. So investors are sort of uh, cautious on that stock at the moment. And that is why we saw a huge decline yesterday. Uh, East African breweries, we mentioned a bit earlier in the news items, 1.5% uh, off there on the day? Yes, uh, EABL, we, all analysts would tell you that they expected a decline in earnings because <laughs> of the finance costs that had occurred. Uh, we expected those to be reflected in this year's P&L, which has happened. 
uh, the first half. And we are expecting that the earnings will be, will be a little lower at the close of the year because of that as well. Um, what we, what another thing to recognize is that EABL has been going up, quite, it has been trading at a very huge multiple of about 22%. And the problem with that is we expect that investors will now begin taking profits in that stock uh, going forward. Then the election that's coming up, uh, as we've said before, at the end of last year, it seemed a long way away, coming much closer now. Has the market, uh, is the market reacting? Uh, are the signals coming from the political space uh, doing anything with the market at the moment? And, and what do you expect in terms of uh, that election? The point has been made that uh, the arrangements for the election, uh, the, the structure of it and so on, rather different to last time when there were problems. Uh, in, in regard to the election, what we are seeing is foreign investors are beginning to sort of enter the market a little bit more cautiously. We saw a decline yesterday uh, in foreign participation for, uh, to about 44 million, 44% uh, from 82% on the previous session. And these are some of the signs that people are sort of taking a wait and see approach to the market. But for us, we don't expect uh, we don't expect a lot of uh, market activity in terms of, in terms of uh, ma the market rising. Or we're expecting it to remain flat and subdued up to, up to around election time and after the election.